Hey, what's up, guys? It's LEGO Hobo 910 here with another LEGO video. And in this video, I'm reviewing set number 75965, The Rise of Voldemort from Harry Potter. And before I get into this review, I just want to say you probably may have noticed my new piece of equipment here for the set. Uh, this is the first video I'm recording with this, and so I'm still experimenting it, trying to figure out how it works and how I can use it best. And also, as you can see, you can clearly see where it is. In the future, I'm going to try to find a way to cover it and kind of blend it into the studio. So, for a few videos here, at least, it's going to be a bit funky. But anyway, let's get right into the review. Here is the main and kind of only build of the set. Technically, there is this second build, which we'll look at real quick. It's just the Triwizard Cup, which I think is a pretty neat build, and it works really effectively. Uh... It's just small little builds, so we'll just set it aside for now. Then there's kind of this main build, and I really like it. It's really simple, but it really works and gets the idea across as well as the scene across fairly well. So I say we start on this left side here. And these two sides just hinge up and down, and so if you want the ground to be flat, you can, but they just kind of hinge there to kind of slope it into a nice scene. And it's also kind of, you know, how they're connected in order to get the slope... So you're really not intended to do that, but if you want to, you can. And then there's just a small little gravestone here, as well as a vine, a bit of rock, detailing some leaves. And as you can see, there's plenty of space to lay figures across this. There's a lot of space, so you can easily fit the four figures that come in the set. And the right side here, I think, is definitely more interesting. It has a pretty small, little simple gravestone build there. And then it has a larger one here with the nice sticker for the Deathly Hallows symbol. I think is definitely cool, and also the way it's connected to get that angle is very simple, but you don't see used often. Is a kind of unique technique that I like a lot. And then in the back, of course, we have Tom Riddle Senior's grave. But we'll get to that in a second. We're first going to start at the front here, where there's a major feature, and this is actually really well integrated and hidden, hidden in, which I like. It's just using this grave, so if you flip it up, you can make Voldemort rise. And even though you know he doesn't rise from the ground, this is a good way to have him kind of concealed and then be reborn. My one complaint with this feature, though, is with the, the space in the compartment, there isn't enough room for him to have his wand while he's in there, even if you, like, lay it kind of, you know, flat across like that. If we put him there and lay it back, you can see then the ground pops up a bit. But other than that, I think it's pretty cool. You can't go too fast or else it just bounces back in. But it works fairly well. And then in the back here, we have this cauldron, then a fire under it, and this is the cauldron which, you know, they use to perform the ceremony, and if we dump it all out, you know, it's just a regular cauldron. And there's a few things in here meant to represent the various items for it. First, we have the bone of the father, it's using, you know, a Lego bone piece. And then we have a drop of blood here using this transparent, I think it's an, a Technic eye piece? I believe is what it's called. It's meant to represent the the blood that Harry gives, the blood of the enemy. And then it's one of these clip pieces to be Wormtail's hand. The uh, I think it's hand of the servant. I think is how it goes. I wish they would have included an extra hand piece, but I'm pretty sure they don't include like you know extra limbs and stuff because the, the way that they're manufactured, they're just all put together, so it really wouldn't work. And then there's this adorable little piece, and it's, you know, the little Voldemort before he's fully reborn, and they just reuse this piece which came in a series minifigure on a Native American, I believe it was dark tan with then, you know, like, a little face printed in there, but here they have this little Voldemort, which I think is absolutely hilarious as well as kind of adorable, more adorable than it should be, and that can all just go in the cauldron and go right there in order to bring Voldemort back. And if we move to the back here, here's the grave which I was talking about. And then here's the Grim Reaper statue. And if we just move that, we can pop Harry off. You can see there's a nice little place there so we can stand slightly angled. And then this can be articulated around enough that, you know, you can get him trapped in a nice position there with the, the scythe. As well as, in, you know, just set it normally. And then back here it has the large sticker which says Tom Riddle. The stickers in this set are absolutely amazing. There's very few of them, as you can see, just those couple. But they're done really, really well. And then he can also just pop off if you want. I wish I would have actually included more studs for him to have a stronger connection to keep knocking him off and trying to attach, like move the scythe to attach Harry. 
And it just has these wings, which are just, you know, built on a neck bracket like that. And, of course, a gray cloak piece there. And then on the back of the mock, there's just some, excuse me, not mock, set. There's just some leaves here, which I think look really cool, especially from the front. They just add a little bit more depth and a bit more detail. That really isn't necessary. Definitely adds. And I really like it when set designers do that, when they just add things that you don't necessarily need, but really improve the quality of the set. So now let's move to the minifigures. So let's start by looking at Harry and Voldemort. Harry is very similar to every other figure of him in this way. He uses the same hair piece as all of his fourth year figures. And then also, of course, black mid legs. And the dark brown wand, which he always comes with. Though I do really, really like the torso print here. This one's exclusive to him in this set. And it looks so good. Uh, it, it's a kind of an iconic outfit, to me personally at least. And it's so simplistic, yet done so well. The way it says Potter on the back there, it is different than the one in the Hungarian Horntail set. Isn't that when he was wearing a jacket over, you know, this kind of uh, final trouser task jacket shirt thing? I, I don't know how to describe it. The, you know what I'm talking about, though. And it also has a little Hogwarts crest there. I really like the way it looks. If we pop the hairpiece off, you can see the two facial expressions better, which are the same ones that both his third and fourth year ones use all throughout this wave. And then, we move on over to Voldemort. This is very different than the one in the CMF series, and this is also the first Voldemort figure we have gotten in a set in the new Harry Potter wave. And, yeah, this one's very different than the CMF one, because it has a completely different facial expression, as well as this one has black robes, whereas the other one had kind of dark green. It does use a bit of dark green throughout for detailing, which I think works really well and looks good. And then he has the white wand, of course. This is the second place that a white wand comes. First one being CMF Voldemort. Then he uses the black robe. I wish they would have done a bit of printing on the front of the robe here. It would have looked slightly better. But one thing that I'm really impressed by is the fact that that's pretty white. Normally when they print like white or light colors on darker things, they don't print it thick enough. And so it ends up being kind of a bad color. Especially when they like print flesh tones on dark blues and on blacks and stuff, they've been having lots of problems with that recently. But this one actually looks really good. I also really like the facial expression here. It's really menacing and definitely fits Voldemort really well, and I think it just looks great. So now let's move to the other two minifigures. So on the left we have Wormtail, or Peter Pettigrew, whichever one you prefer, I just generally say Wormtail. And then on the right we have a Death Eater. Uh, we're going to start with Wormtail, and I think this is a perfect representation. The ones in the original Harry Potter sets from, you know, when the movies were coming out really look nothing like him, but this is perfect. He comes with a, a dark brown wand as well as then the knife to, you know, do the sacrificing and whatnot. And then you also may notice that his right hand here is in light gray to represent the metal hand that Voldemort gives him. But anyway, th this is a perfect representation. I think this hairpiece fits pretty perfectly. And then also just look at that facial expression. It Aw, oh, looks so much like him. It's just perfect. And the same with the other one. This one being more angry. I definitely prefer this one, though. I think this one fits him, his personality slightly more, but they both look exactly like him. It, they did such a great job on the face there. As well as the robes, they aren't as, you know, big of a deal to me, but, like, they, they still look really good. I like the dark tan lines going throughout. Very detailed. There's also little bits of kind of leopard print. I guess you could say on the, the shirt he's wearing underneath, as well as the button detail. This is a very, very detailed figure. And then, here's around to the back. You know, pretty simple. Still kind of carrying the same details. I think he's such a good minifigure. They did such a great job on him. And then here's just a generic Death Eater, who, even though he's not as iconic, I think, once again, they did a great job on him. I like the new hat piece that they use here. It definitely fits, especially for, you know, the Death Eaters at the very beginning of the fourth movie. And then, also the facial print there is pretty epic with the skull mask. And then, unusually enough, they just have his face be gray, which is kind of weird. I don't know why they didn't just have it be flesh tone, but it oddly somehow works. He then also has a black wand, and then I like the torso print there as well. It's pretty simple, and then it just tears around to the back, and you can kind of see his hood hanging down there. Um, the... Uh, robe piece, I wish would have once again had printing on the front, just like maybe just carrying down that kind of 
button line or something, or just a few wrinkles, something, to make it a bit less plain. But overall, I think these are two really good minifigures. So overall, I really like this set, and I highly recommend it. It's definitely worth the $20. It's a very good deal for $20. If you look at the piece count of 184 pieces, that seems about reasonable for uh, $20, but the, the size of this feels larger than most $20 sets. And also the fact that it has, you know, four minifigures, four really good detailed minifigures, as well as four useful and great minifigures, you know, having the main villain being a cheap set a lot of the time, like, put highly desired figures like a Voldemort in the $100 sets, but I'm really glad that they put, you know, a main, very important character in such a small, cheap set. But also getting Harry in this outfit is good. I really like Wormtail, I can't stop raging about how great they did on him. Such a well done figure. And then I'm glad that they decided to throw in a Death Eater, they could have just let it there at four minifigures. They obviously wouldn't put Cedric in here, that'd be kind of grim. And also since they already had him in this outfit in the CMF series, so it wouldn't make sense to put him in here. Uh, since, you know, the, they want to keep the CMF one exclusive. So I'm glad that they decided to put a fourth minifigure in, as well as have to be something that is kind of useful, like a generic Death Eater, so you know you can build up more followers of Voldemort instead of just having named characters. Like, they could have put Lucius in here, but I think just a regular unnamed one is definitely a good idea to include in a set at some point. Yeah, that's all for me. I highly recommend this, and bye.